Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Why is it important to be here? Because we want to talk about what is it that God gave us that really can make a difference on our life journey. Uh, and, and how are these things revealed? Perhaps there's some of you now watching where um, you found yourself throughout your life sometimes uh, going to the store to buy something that you already have. <laughs> Well, and, that, and we know, hey, well, what the heck can we do that for? It's a waste, especially if it's something perishable. Okay, so, but what God wants to do is to show us what do we have and how does what he has given us make a difference. Christianity is all about what God gives us, and of course, we respond to that. And as we look at the text here today of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, uh, that's exactly what God would want, is for us to take what he's already given us and make it a part of our life. So stay with us here today. We're glad that you're here. Uh, you can see me. I can't see you. If you'd like to press like, if you're comfortable with that, and just let us know you're out there, that's fine. If you're just out checking off Christianity, uh, but we really appreciate that and uh, your openness and to try to understand what is Christianity about. Okay, but we're going to look at this text, and this is really good for everybody to understand why is what God gives us make a difference. So our theme here today, our message is enrichment, and we're going to take an enrichment inventory from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 uh, and the first nine verses of this book of the Bible, okay, that St. Paul wrote. This is a shot, <laughs> of an LG TV. I don't know if you can read on your screen right now the fine print there, but boy, this got some stars up here. It's rated very well. I think you got it at a 4.6. But anyway, why do we have this? This LG 29.7 cubic inch. Now we hear that, and you may have one of these, so if you knock on that door on the refrigerator, it will light up and you can see what you have. I think there are uh, refrigerators out there that will let you see what you have from an app on your phone when you go to the store. You think, well, do I have this one? You know, um, and then you could tell. But here you can see what you have. And so what we want to do here now is lighten up what we have, okay? This is what the text says. This is one verse text here today. This is way off our longest. That in everything you were enriched in him. Um, in all your speech and all your knowledge. Okay, there's one of our first inventory items. So how is it that God has enriched us? The word here, I believe it's also could be used in other terms where uh, it's actually the word rich. It's a, uh, uh, if you were talking about a person with a lot of resources, they would use the same word. Okay, so taking an inventory. Okay, we're going to go down through Five different items here, uh, taking an inventory. We got our inventory guy here at a deli or something, and we're going to look at grace and pre peace, speech and knowledge, spiritual gifts, 
called into fellowship and a sustaining faith. Okay, so let's go to the first one, which is really a huge issue. And, and, and Paul starts off with this main point. The grace and peace be added unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So there's a lot of people who've got that whole memorized when they do uh, sermons and preaching and give messages. Grace is everything that God has come to give us. And you know what? You have it. God has put grace into your life, and the way that he's done this is through Jesus. That was the whole message of Jesus coming onto the earth. You know, it wasn't like, okay, give us more rules for living, show us how to do this, and how we need to operate here, and what's going to make God happy. He's saying, no, I'm not coming to give you more rules. I'm coming to give you grace, that all human beings have issues. We all fall short of the two things that God tells us we need to live for. That's our love for him and love for others. Nobody can pull it off. Jesus comes and he gives us grace. Jesus comes and says, look, I didn't come to uh, uh, push the law on you, my paraphrase, but I have come to fulfill the law, to take care of the pressure of performance to please God. Uh, and a lot of people today just turn around and use that to please other people or to please some type of a subgroup that they're in to show that they're good. Well, once we have this grace from Jesus, it gives us a sense of peace. A sense of peace because the pressure's off. God is saying, you know, you don't have to go through life sweating it about me and what you think, what I think. And people say, yeah, I get it. God loves me. Um, yeah, uh, grace, amazing grace that saved a wrench like me. I'm going to heaven. Well, grace has an impact on the way that you function, okay? And the way that it, what it does is it leads you to a sense of peace. Now, how do you get a peace? You get peace by having a relationship with God, okay? If you don't have a relationship with God, you've got to have a relationship somewhere else. And for most of us, we try to work our life out in uh, finding a sense of peace in the world. Uh, finding what works for us. Find us what we can rely on. What can we trust in? And a lot of times that's other people. And some people, they've been burned by other people because all people are messed up and they become hard-hearted. So they don't get connected emotionally with other people as well because they live in a sense of safety. But you get a sense of peace by getting your environment straight. All the things that God would give you. You know, how, how do you like the weather? You like warm? You like hot? You like cold? Well, you, you move towards what works for you. You take what God God gives you, and you make that a place of security, of something that you can trust in. And it's, things can go on all over the place here, beyond what we can ever talk about. But the issue with all of this stuff that we can put our life in, it's all going to shake. And it's, eventually it's going to fail, including our bodies and our brains will shut down. And we lose everything in life. You know, people that want to pursue wealth, which people would say wealth is the highest or the greatest uh, motivator for a lot of humans. And it's up there. I don't agree totally with that, but it is up there. It, that w You're going to lose everything, okay? What God wants to do is for us to have that relationship with him, knowing he is for us, who can be against us. So all the stuff that can make us nervous in this life, going broke, other people hurting us, um, illness in our own body, will people like us? We, we, we don't look for peace that way by doing, doing, doing to get all of that. We have it in our God who says, be still, I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Inventory item number one is really where everything comes together. Now, how does this all add up? We don't want to go too far, but in speech and knowledge, okay? So look, if we go back to inventory item number one, which we have, we also have an inventory item number two, speech and knowledge. Okay, now knowledge is, again, I want to just get into, well, okay, I know God loves me, and that's a nice concept. Um, I know Jesus died for me so I can go to heaven. I have that knowledge. Now, 
that's my church, that my faith life, and now I got my other part of my life, which I live to to do uh, live in the way that uh, what works for me. So it's kind of like you put one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world. Okay, this is not the way Christianity is meant to work. Okay, but the knowledge here—that's what we're looking at. The knowledge of God's love for you in your life is going to affect what comes out of your mouth, and what comes out of your mouth in your speech is how you relate to other people. And so if you want to find out what's going on in your life and your relationship with God, we'll look at your relationships with other people. Okay, and when we do that, well, we're back again. At, well, we're all messed up. <laughs> but then when we're back, at, we're all messed up, we're back at the love of God in Christ Jesus. The knowledge of the love of God in Christ Jesus. We have this in our life. He has given it to us. And from that love, from that sense of peace that God loves us, words come out of our mouth. Words of peace. Words of value. Words of love for others. See, this is really where life comes together and how we relate to other people. God just gives us two basic targets of life, both with the, wor- the verb of love. Love him, love others. The knowledge of God coming down to us, the knowledge of what happened with Jesus Christ, the knowledge of why did he die on that cross for me, that knowledge of why I have this perfect life that has been given to me, this part of my life inventory, will affect the way I talk to other people. To love them, to build them up, to be a person of peace. Inventory item number two. You have it. Inventory item number three. Spiritual gift. Or spiritual gifts. You have them. Where do they come from? From you? No, they're given to you by God. Now what exactly is this? Well, spiritual gifts are probably the least of all the things that God gives us because our life is basically time-bound. We all understand this. Whether you're a believer or you're a non-believer, we're not going to live here forever. So these things are like temporary things that come into our life and then they're discarded when our uh, physical body shuts down, when our biology, that's the end of the game, that's the way God made us, our heart quits, our liver quits, and we die. Okay. But what spiritual gifts will do is they give us a purpose to live out our faith. Not the full purpose, but there are nuances and difference between being connected to other Christians, okay? So God gives out different gifts to different people, and you have this in your life. It's part of your inventory. We're just tapping on that window again of that refrigerator to look at what we got, okay? Now, how do you get to know what is your spiritual gift? Well, God will reveal this to you through the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that commutes or communicates with you. And it can take place in different ways. You, if The way you function in life, if you feel a draw towards doing something uh, that... Uh, uh, that you just feel maybe emotionally uh, attracted to, a way to do something, that could be your spiritual gift. You know, if you're, uh, it could be a teacher, you could be into leadership, you could be in just understanding the way things work, you could have a spiritual gift of, of wisdom, and then God gives a spiritual gift of love to everybody, which is really the most important one of them all. These things are all temporary in your life. Other people... God can use in your life that could come to you and say, I see this in you. I see this difference in you. I think that's what God could have put in your life, and that's your spiritual gift. What's important here? You have this. It's part of your inventory of how you've been enriched in every way. It's meant to be a blessing in your life as you use your spiritual gift to help this world to make a difference for Jesus Christ. 
It can give you a sense of meaning and a sense of purpose. Not to say this is, I don't want to go too far with that, okay? Because these are very temporary. You know, you're only going to have it a little bit. And anything that's temporary in your life is not meant you build your life on it, but it's meant to be used for the purposes of God. So you could get in a sense of what is your life meaning? Why are you here? That the world needs you as a Christian, okay? And I, I want to just woe right now on this. If you're listening to this right now, you're not sure about all this stuff. Um, you know, you, you can't just because I say this. Maybe if I do say this and God's saying, yeah, that's true. But keep searching. Keep looking at these issues. And, and, and let God, there's a power greater than church, uh, pastors, that the, the Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you. Let that work. Okay, called into fellowship. Inventory item number four. Okay, we've hit on this a little bit, right? And saying this is extremely important in your life. That is your relationship with other people, with other Christians. Okay. You know, I, I, I would say that Make it and break it life, if you do well with this time that you've been given, relationships with others is incredibly important. You know, and we could go back a couple inventory items there saying that some people shut down emotionally because they get hurt, they want to protect themselves, they don't know why, why, why people are what they are, they don't have very little grace for them, it can mess you up. But the issue is, is that God has made us to be relating to one another, to love one another as he has loved us. Two directions of faith here again. We are called into fellowship with Jesus Christ. The word here, koinonia, which is this commonness, this oneness with our God, but we are also at the same time called into the body of Christ. What is the body of Christ? That is the believers on earth and all of the different parts with all of the different spiritual gifts. And it is through that love and connection that our life has meaning. And it has a sense of satisfaction. I love the picture up here right now because you see the fellowship is all uh, happening around the love of God in Christ Jesus. And how that connects us together. Now what does that mean? Does that mean that, hey man, you know, you, you get involved with the church, you get involved with a bunch of Christians, uh, you know, hey, life can be at its best. I think it can be when it's working well by the power of the Holy Spirit, but still people in relationships are messed up. Whether they're Christians, they're not Christians, okay? But the issue being is that, you know, we're messed up, we're going to get on each other's nerves, we're going to be sinful, but hopefully these things can be worked out of our life with the fruits of the Spirit, but there's always the cross. The love, the forgiveness of Jesus putting us back on track. And I know there's a lot of people out there today, you may even be one of them, who've got hard-hearted towards fellow believers. Say, I don't, you know, I, I believe in God. But church, I've, I've seen enough. I'm out of there. I've seen what they do. And the things that they do <laughs> that you see, well, you're probably right. Well, they could be projection too in your own life because you've got your own issues. But yeah, it's, if people want to say that the church is bad, it's worse than you think it is. Because people are messed up, but the Savior, the Savior is the loving one. It's a place where we practice God's grace where we practice forgiveness. It's about being there for other people in their worst days, letting them know you care about them, you know. We've got our prayer partners right now in this church, you know. I think over a thousand people have signed up, but um, I don't think they're all praying, but we put out these prayers, and uh, I, I believe a lot of them are, and that's why we're here, to love others, to say that what hurts you matters, and we'll talk to God for you. We care about you. We value you. It comes down to those two targets. Love God, love others. Living life at its fullest. Inventory number four. All right, and finally, inventory number five. You have it. And it's not about what you do again. 
It's about what God promises to do in your life. And Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he will sustain you to the end on this life journey that you have. Okay? It's not going to be about our commitment to Jesus Christ. I'm going to do it. I'm going to stay because I got that willpower and I'm going to get back on it. Or maybe I don't have that willpower, but I got people out there that will put me on back on track as they'll watch. You know, what God is saying, I will sustain you. I will hold on to you on your life journey. I will be there on your worst day. I will be there on your best day. Why? Because I sent my son to die for you and I brought you into my family. And you are a dear child of mine. And life is a journey. There's a reason that you're here. There's a reason that you're born. God has a purpose for you. And he's going to walk with you. He will sustain you throughout your life journey. You have this in your inventory list. Okay, I don't know where you're at, you know, right now. If you know, I, I know I can forget what I have in Christ Jesus. It's good to be reminded, you know, that you've been enriched in every way. I think we could probably go beyond the five and say, hey, we got all five, we got them all. But, I mean, these things, they, 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 they move out in different ways. And uh, we really, even informationally, neocortex, we, we can look at, okay, I got that, I got that, I got that, I got that. But it's more than that, see. It's, it's this knowledge that comes and, and, and takes over who you are as a person. God wants to walk with you. God wants that relationships with you. God is saying, I will hold on to you on your life journey. So let it be so. Take in the inventory Know what you have, and God's peace be with you on your journey. Okay? And we'll say amen at that point. Okay. Prayers. Um, we've got a whole lot of prayers that have been pouring in throughout the world. <laughs> We're struggling with them because we, 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 we've been praying for them, but they, as they hit different places throughout the world, um, some of them people just pour, pile in. And that's why we had a situation this week uh, in certain parts of the earth, uh, well, Germany, uh, United States, and South Africa. Um, the, 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 the prayers are just coming in. So we're going to try to grab them in a broad way. You know, the, the one other issue too with this is that we promised that we would pray for the Ukrainians. And we told this country that and we sent messages. Of course, not everybody in there knows about us and we're praying for them. But there's a lot of people there that we will not forget these people. But, you know, the, the Ukrainians are, are suffering and struggling. But the Russians are too, you know. And, and it's not just there, it's all over the world. But let, let's just pray. And so what I'd like to ask you, okay, look, if you, if you could just say, you know, it's all about me, what, what can you do for us? But right now I want, if you can give a gift of, of a prayer to God for these people. We're not going to pray for all 205 and they keep coming even as we're here now, but uh, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, thank you. We, we know uh, that you've given us more than we could understand. But you give us a glimpse here from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 of the inventory, the ways that we have been enriched in every way. So, Father, continue to bless us as we look at what we have, what you give us. And it's really, we understand it's only by the power of the Holy Spirit that we can grasp these things. Continue to take, over, take care of us, watch over us. And Father, as you've called us to love and to care for people on the earth, we bring before you the Russians and the Ukrainians and the struggles that they have gone through, are going through. And we ask you to bless these nations. And we think of all those in the winter who have lost uh, utilities, who are cold. Um, we think of those who are suffering, those who are grieving. Father, send your peace. Uh, we think of Wally Long as he continues to struggle with health issues. And we think of the people that go beyond the list here today of hundreds of people that are reaching out, calling out to our prayer partners from Germany, United States, and South Africa, 
um, for all of the prayers that people have asked for a relationship with you. Um, they would like our prayers for reconciliation with others, for forgiveness, for health issues, for financial stability, for those who are struggling with addiction and losses. Um, Father, be with them all. As the prayers go to you, we ask that you would hear those prayers and that you would reveal yourself in their lives, that you are there, that you are taking care of them, that you are watching over them. Lord, into your hands do we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Amen. Okay. Benediction. I think of that last shot here today. He will sustain you to the end. Okay? But I'm going to say to you and encourage you on that life journey, keep looking at what God has given you. Not just in an information wise. Let the Holy Spirit reveal to you what you have in Christ Jesus. So on that life journey, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor, give you and your life his peace. Amen. Thank you for being here with us today. Uh, again, if you want to just let us know who, that you're out there and you press the like or... Um, send a, a message that we would appreciate uh, that if you're comfortable again with that. If you'd like to check out our website, you can do that by going to St. Uh, Matthew Church and uh, you can see we've got things on there called For the Curious, which are uh, short one minute, two minute, three minute. <laughs> We're trying to shorten them and shorten them all the time here and hopefully we'll be successful with that on different issues that have to do with this Christian life. And those are meant to edify, but they're also meant to be shared, to let the world know that there is a God out here who cares, who understands, who sees us. And if you'd like to share them, that would be great. We also have our children's corner, uh, resources for uh, young children and building up their faith. There's also Bible passages on there. If you'd like to be a part of our prayer partners, boy, should we sure could use some help now with hundreds of people coming in uh, and just would be willing to say that they matter, God, and, and please hear that prayer for that financial situation or that relationship or that addiction, whatever it may be, uh, if you'd like to be a part of that. But in any case, uh, God's peace be with all of you again, and come back and see us again. Take care.